a pretty serious time. You know, uh, this administration's created a bunch of firsts uh, for this country, over 10 million illegals, uh, violent crime 37 percent, rape 42 percent, robbery up 63 percent, fentanyl everywhere, gas prices record record highs for a long length of time. Uh, our military is being destroyed from within. Our three-letter agencies uh, are having huge problems. They're being weaponized. The world's in absolute chaos. This administration setting records of incompetency. Uh, congratulations, if that's what they're trying to do, because they've been able to accomplish that. And now, after multiple assassination attempts, they can't even give the former president and possibly future president security he and his family needs. It's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this isn't surprising. We have a huge mental health problem in this country. Uh, but when you hear on TV and the radio and on social media, media about uh, this guy's a Hitler, this guy's a fascist, uh, he's a threat to democracy, what do you expect? All you have to do is look at some of these tweets I have here from some of our so-called politicians. And then you got people like Hillary Clinton, George Clooney, George, Joy Reid, Robert De Niro, wannabe politicians, and it's time for them to shut up because somebody is going to get killed other than the firemen that got killed already in Pennsylvania. Mentally ill people hear this violent, dangerous rhetoric, and we're going to have a copycat. It's coming, and uh, it's just unfortunate. Somebody's going to get killed even after the the firemen in Pennsylvania. So what's it going to take? 66 days ago was the first assassination attempt. What have we learned? Zero. And we don't need some 10,000 word report. We just need to know what happened and how do we fix it? We up here have no clue, no clue of any information of what's happened. If Joe Biden and Kamala Harris care anything about this country, they need to immediately grant President Trump as much as they possibly can the security around he and his family. One thing about President Trump, he's different. He doesn't work six, eight hours a day. He's going to work 14, 16 hours a day. You're not going to stop him from going to outdoor events. He's also going to do more than one event, sometimes two to three events a day. And you can't do it with just a basic group of Secret Service. It can't happen. You have to, and we have to give him more support, whether it's Rangers, whether it's uh, Navy SEALs, whether it's more DHS. I don't care. We got 48 days, and if we have something disastrous happen in this time frame between now and the election, we know what could happen. We need to take care of this president. Again, he is different. He's actually going to do his job. He's actually going to go out and do his campaigning. He's not going to sit in the basement. He's going to do what he needs to do. Folks, we're in DEFCON 1, and up here on the hill in the last few days, I don't feel that. I don't feel the need for, hey, a sense of urgency. The Secret Service has to lay the law down to the people here in Congress say, we got to give help. I hear the, the Secret Service or the FBI director or the regional director down in South Florida about, you know, he's not the, he's not the sitting president. We all know that. But he's... But he's had two assassination attempts. My God, wake up and smell the roses. We've got to do something. Let's don't wait till it's too late. We are not a third world country. And I guarantee you, third world countries give better protection to presidents and former presidents than what we do. And that's a shame. So hopefully we get something done in the next in the near future. Because we don't need a disaster on our hands. And uh, this is serious because there's so much love for this president across the country about how, how hard he works. This administration is responsible for protecting him. That's very unusual when you have a former president having to ask the president administration that he's running against for protection. It's their time to put up and shut up. All right, coach, thanks so much. What well, appears to be open season on presidential candidates you don't like. 
Last week, President Trump warned us on the debate stage about the hatred and lie being spread by the left and the mainstream media, making him a target. Now another attempt has been made on his life. Now what was the media's response during the debate? They brushed it off. AB said, moving on, let's move on. Well, folks, we're not moving on. The Republicans in the House and Senate are not moving on. We'll fight until President Trump is protected and people realize the danger of inciting violence through their rhetoric and their irresponsible reporting. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and others have repeatedly labeled Trump a threat to democracy, fueling a very dangerous narrative. Now, why wasn't this assassination attempt major news? Why did the major TV stations not break from their regular coverage? If it had been Kamala Harris, would the media have remained silent? America has become a powder keg of political violence, pushed to the edge by media, big tech, and inflammatory campaign ads. And we're now reaping the consequences of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's lawlessness. Their open borders, their cashless bail, their defund the police policies and the unchecked riots. So we're, we are calling for immediate action and that's why we sent a letter today to Director Rowe from the Secret Service. Seven members of the Senate have signed that letter. We're asking him to give Trump the same protection as a sitting president. And I call on all the media, especially the legacy media and big, de big tech to turn down the rhetoric, stop attacking, stop censoring and report the truth. Donald Trump nearly lost his life. This is not the first time it's happened in the last couple of months. It's the second time. <clears throat> this um, was a tragedy that fortunately was forestalled. This gunman, um, Mr. Ryan Ralph, decided it'd be a good idea to hide and wait for him, knowing that he was gonna be golfing that day, apparently having been tipped off somehow, hit himself in the bushes. And uh, he had a GoPro and a military-grade weapon ready to be fired. Fortunately, a Secret Service agent apparently saw the barrel of the gun and fired shots before shots were fired, and uh, Mr. Ralph fled. But this came way too close for comfort. I don't think it's lost on anyone that had it been the sitting president of the United States uh, golfing that day, the gunman wouldn't have gotten anywhere nearly that close, and it, certainly anywhere close enough to have been able to carry out the attack. Uh, this guy was. He was within 500 yards, and it's very fortunate. We should all uh, be grateful and uttering prayers of gratitude that it didn't end uh, worse than it did, but it still came way too close. It's understandable that we offer a really high level of protection to sitting presidents of the United States. There are all kinds of reasons why the sitting president needs a large amount of security. But whereas here you've got a presidential candidate, the, uh, the Republican candidate, the last standing impediment between the, a conti continuation of the current administration through Vice President Harris being elected this November, um, uh, Donald J. Trump is the, the sole potential impediment to that. Where that circumstance exists and where, especially where, uh, that candidate has now been uh, the intended victim of two nearly successful assassination attempts, it's time to really increase his security detail. If necessary, uh, to, a same, to the same level or a comparable level to that enjoyed typically by the President of the United States. That isn't too much to ask. And in fact, it's a, it's a real misjudgment that would result in anything less than that. It's also important to remember the sort of environment in which this sort of thing tends to thrive. When Donald Trump is repeatedly characterized by, among other people, Kamala Harris as a threat to democracy, saying things like democracy is on the line, not just good policy is on the line or my, my kind of government is on the line, but democracy itself is on the line. And Donald Trump is a threat to that democracy. Those things have their intended effect. 
When they use Ad Hitlerum over and over and over again to demonize and vilify this particular presidential candidate, it's going to have an intended effect. When you use Ad Hitlerum, you tend to create Operation Valkyrie type moments, especially when you're using Ad Hitlerum against somebody running for the office of president of the United States. Is the, the logical reasoning flows by saying, well, if this person is that bad, then anything and everything is morally justified in order to stop him. So it's not lost on me, it shouldn't be lost on anyone, that that same phrase used by Kamala Harris, that you know democracy is on the line in her race against Donald Trump, uh, the shooter himself used that same phrase. And that's significant. Meanwhile, many of the mainstream news media who have largely forgotten about the July 13th incident in Butler, Pennsylvania, who seem to have chosen almost to pretend as if that never existed, continued to, in some circumstances, uh, give short trip to their reporting on this. For example, NBC uh, reported this attempted assassination at one point as a quote-unquote golf club incident. That's not fair. That's not responsible. And that's um, the sort of thing that can create an atmosphere in which this sort of thing can become far too possible. I believe it was MSNBC that on the same day as this attempted assassination suggested that Republicans, quote unquote, turn down the rhetoric. Well, if anyone needs to tone down the rhetoric, it's the left. Uh, it's the left that is constantly demonizing this presidential candidate. Look, if you disagree with Donald Trump's policies, fine. If you disagree with decisions or statements made by Donald Trump, state them. But by demonizing him and by saying that democracy itself is on the line, by characterizing him as an existential threat to us as a country, you create the inevitable risk, the inevitable possibility at least, that some crazy person out there will take that far more seriously than they should and try to take matters into their own hands in devastating ways. So uh, this issue isn't going away. We've got to make sure that President Trump has the protection that he needs. But in the meantime, we should encourage our fellow citizens to speak as precisely and carefully as they can uh, at taking note of the risks that we can perhaps unintentionally create when we refer to someone in, uh, in terms that are morally irresponsible. Thank you. We're now going to hear from my colleague, Senator Budd. Who left? Oh, nope. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues for being here on this important issue. And I want to thank uh, Senator Tuberville uh, for getting us here together. Um, first off, I want to ask all Americans who are inclined to do so, uh, pray for our country, pray for President Trump's uh, safety. Uh, that's first uh, and foremost. But his security must be uh, increased to the highest level of presidential protection. Um, all leaders receive threats. But President Trump has now been the target of two assassination attempts. Now, now we've been briefed about real threats from Iran and its terrorist proxies targeting President Trump. Leftist activists are out there who have a history of targeted political violence. Um, Over-the-top rhetoric from Democrats. I mean, we even see some in these tweets that have been put up here. Uh, the term threat and weaponization used over here in this very brief text over here to, to my left uh, by President Biden at, in a very uh, few words. It uses the word threat four times. But it's over the top and it's raised, raising the national temperature to a very dangerous level. Uh, you even have Democrats out there calling for President Trump to be eliminated. Democrats who claim that this election uh, would be the end of American democracy or that American life as we know it would be uh, over. Not only is this just crazy talk, uh, it's reckless and it's unhealthy. So if Democrats can't win elections without this fear mongering, then I don't believe that they deserve to lead this country. And if we can't uh, keep all of our candidates safe, all of our candidates safe, then our entire system of government will be in peril. But for the meantime, right now, in this election, President Trump needs more security, and he needs it now.
My colleagues have said it all very well. It is imperative that President Donald Trump receive what he needs, the protection he needs to keep him safe so that he can continue to campaign, so that he can continue to fight for the American people. And that is what he is seeking to do every single day. Yesterday, I sent a letter over to Acting Director Rowe, head of the Secret Service, saying every possible resource, everything that's available to President Biden, Vice President Harris, also needs to be made available to former President Trump so that he can continue to work. You know, what we have seen is apparently a lack of resources or planning or focus or a combination of all. Why are they not using drones? Why are they not using dogs? Why do they not have protection at the level that was there when he was president? Why are they not doing that? So it's going to be important for the Secret Service to answer that question and to focus on what enhancements and additions are going to be necessary to properly protect President Trump. And we have mentioned today some of the rhetoric. Our nation has been well served over the past 248 years by robust, respectful, bipartisan political debate. And to label a political opponent as a threat to democracy and all the other terms that they use, that is not something that serves that well. We are the United States of America. We do not settle our differences with violence. What we do is to choose a team we want to campaign for, and then we go out and we campaign. And it is going to be so important that each of and every candidate, regardless of their political affiliation, knows that they can push forward their ideas, that they can have that robust debate, and that they are going to be safe during that process. Questions? I would, I would probably say that there's problems on both sides, but you always have that. You always have that in a campaign. Uh, but I think sometimes they get more personal from the left, and they've gotten that way. And when you throw President Trump underneath the bus uh, from the DOJ, weapon, weaponizing the, the FBI, raiding his home, trying to impeach him twice, trying to bankrupt him, trying to do all the things they possibly can, and then at the end of the day, it really gets personal. I think he's got a pretty good case of saying, hey, enough's enough. And uh, it's just, I think it'd be understandable that both may need to hold it down a little bit, but we've got 48 days. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and Tim Waltz, they have a full influx of people that are protecting them. We want the Republican nominee protected until the election is over with. We don't need a disaster between now and then. As I said earlier, Copycats are going to pop up everywhere, and we don't need it. Even give them a chance to think of doing anything that would be disastrous for the country. No, I think it's it's the volume of the comments as well. When when 90 percent of the legacy media is following exactly uh, what Kamala Harris is saying or what Joe Biden is saying and just repeating it, this is the theme of their of their whole of their whole election campaign is that Trump is a threat to democracy. Listen to their ads. A new ad this weekend with exactly those words. They don't have a record to run on. President Trump would much rather be talking about his record. 
He'd like to be talking about a secure border, a strong economy, low inflation, low low unemployment. Uh, there weren't any there weren't wars going on across the the world as well. So he's got a great record to run on, but Kamala doesn't have anything to run on. A disastrous economy, 12 million people cross the border e illegally. Uh, African-American unemployment is, is now surging again. They don't have anything to run on. So this is what they rely upon are these personal attacks on Donald Trump. Donald Trump would much rather be talking about his record than this stuff. But the Democrats practice projection. So what they, what they say that somebody else is doing is actually what they're doing. And I think that's what President Trump's trying to communicate, that when, you, when they're saying that he's a threat to democracy, wait a second, isn't an open border a threat to democracy? Uh, isn't destroying our economy and inflation and, and destroying American energy, aren't those all threats to our democracy as well? So I think he's responding to that. We don't, we're not electing him because he's a, a, a silly choir boy. He's going to be out there fighting for Americans. No, no, we don't need more funding. We got 7,000 Secret Service officers out, right, out there right now. There's 100 Secret Service offices across the country, 7,000 employees, uh, um, hundreds of these offices out there. They've got plenty of personnel. They've got plenty of money. They need to prioritize where to be placing these Secret Service agents. They've got the people to do it. And, I, and I've talked to Secret Service agents, and they, they will tell you, all we're doing is we're chasing fraudulent money, counterfeit money, instead of doing their job and protection in a crucial time in our democracy, they should be doing their job. And if we got all these IRS agents that we've hired in the last few years, give them something to do other than to go after the American citizen. But it is, uh, uh, this comes from the Secret Service. We need to use more people in the Secret Service in terms of securing and protecting the candidates in our election. I've played that course with President Trump many times, played it by myself, going out and played. I know exactly where he was at and where the gunman was at. You got to think, five, the hedges are five feet wide, three to five feet wide in most places, 12 to 15 feet tall. Uh, every time I've played, the Secret Service has been on top of everything, going through the bushes, going through the hedges. It's just almost impossible to protect 100% a guy like Donald Trump who's going to go outside, who's going to do rallies, who's going to play golf, who's going to raise money, he's going to shake hands. Uh, I have no problem with the Secret Service, and even President Trump said that, and the local police and the state police. There has to be more. More is better. More people that are not tired, that will go from bounce around from rally to rally, because they can't keep up with this president. They can't keep up with it. He's an energizer bunny. And that's what we want in this country, but we also want one that's going to be protected.